How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be looking at how we can add app translations to our application and it's actually quite simple so let's go ahead and get started immediately by just creating a new file so hold command plus n and we're going to look for something called other or not other but it's going to be uh, empty is what I mean and we're going to go ahead and click the one from other then go ahead and click on next and here we need to name this localizable dot strings and tap on enter and it's going to create a file for us which we can use as a translation file and you're going to have to go ahead and open the sidebar because here you want to go ahead and actually localize this file and all you have to do is tap on this localize button and it's going to localize it in your home language which is going to be set to English by default so inside here we can already get started with using some strings that we can use to localize our app so for example if you have a string that says hello world we're going to just assign it the key of hello string and that's going to equal hello so every time we use this hello string it's going to convert it to this over here and we're going to also be using the same key for translations so you're going to see how that's going to be done but I want to go ahead and create a few more examples so we can just easily copy and paste that into the Japanese translation so here we're going to go ahead and create something called introduction string and we're also going to interpolate with this percent sign and the at symbol and this is just a placeholder which means when we insert this string text over here and insert a variable of our choice it's going to print the following with that placeholder so for example here it's going to print my name is percent at so you're going to see this is going to be substituted with this over here and we're going to add some punctuation so we'll just add a full stop there and finally we'll just add one more which is going to be called a description string and this is just going to equal another example this is an example and there's one thing I absolutely forgot to mention and that is that we need to use semicolons here and the reason I forgot that is because it's been years since I had to use semicolons and it's very easy to forget so definitely remember to have the semicolons after each translation it just tells the program that you're done with this line of translation and that it can move on to the next but next let's go to our content view and insert these translations so I guess we can close this because we don't need it and we have the app preview and let's resume the app preview now inside here we're just going to go ahead and create a v stack with some spacing of 10 and we're just going to have some text views in here so the first text view we want to have is the hello string and it's going to look into the localizable strings and it's going to grab the one it finds most fitting especially since our device is in English it's going to use the English one and we can go ahead and give this a font of dot title dot bold next we'll go ahead and add a text of description string and it's going to have a font of dot body and a text of the introduction string and as you might have remembered earlier we have a placeholder and this is reserved for any kind of interpolation so you can insert any variable you want inside here I'm just going to insert the string of Mario and it's going to update to whatever variable you decide to put into the interpolation and inside here we're just going to go ahead and give it a font of dot caption so those are the basic translations we have so far but how do we add more languages and to do that we just have to go to our main app bundle over here click on the app translations and you're going to notice that down here we'll have a section called localizations and you can just tap on the plus and add the language of your choice I want to go ahead and add Japanese so I'm just going to tap on that and it's going to locate our localizable strings and it can even create a folder for us so let's go ahead and tap on finish and you'll notice that inside our localizable strings we're going to have the Japanese language now included so let's go over there and you're also going to notice that it copy and pasted the ones from the English one so we all we have to do now is change this over here this over here and this over here to get our Japanese translation and I'm not fluent in Japanese so I used Google Translate of course so konnichiwa and then we have this one over here which is my name is this over here and notice that we still use the percent at symbol to use this kind of substitution and we have just one more which is this last example perfect so we have the same translations as we do for the English version 
And now we can go ahead and test this out actually, because right now if you run the preview, you will only see the English version, which is not good for debugging. So we need to go ahead and go down to our content previews and create a group. So here we'll create a group and we're going to insert the content view inside there. And we're gonna give it an environment object with the backslash locale. And the value is going to be the locale.init with the identifier of en. So that's the English version of this app. But of course we want to get the Japanese version. So go ahead and copy and paste that down. So we'll get a second preview and just insert the identifier for the next language you want to test. And if we scroll down, you'll notice we're going to have the Japanese version of our app side by side with the English version. So this is what it's going to look like with the Japanese locale. And it was that simple to add the translation. We're just using one string from the localizable strings and it's going to move it on to the correct locale. Now keep in mind that if you forget to translate something such as if you don't even have this one here and you go back to your app, it's going to ignore that translation completely for the Japanese app. And that's going to be quite annoying. It doesn't look so good, but it's easy to see because it's only going to paste in the literal string over here. And the English version is working just as it should because we have it there. But of course the Japanese version still requires that translation. And to add it, all we have to do is make the same kind of variable as we did for the English one. And it's going to compile the same way. So just resume the preview and it's going to update it once again. But that just about covers the basics of adding translations to your app. So as always guys, I hope this video helped. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next lesson.